Greetings, fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week, I conclude my series on Battletech by talking about the core systems. Now, there are a lot of different units, and I will touch on those a little bit, but the core of this video is going to be talking about how the rules work for the iconic unit of Battletech, the Battle Mech. I will be talking about this in terms of the full Battletech rules, not the Quick Play Alpha Strike, and not the various RPGs. And, again, I will be putting the focus on the Battle Mech. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we talk about the Kings of the Battlefield. Before I talk about the Battle Mech, I just kind of want to talk about just the different units that exist in the game. Each of these have different strengths and weaknesses, and frankly, I could do a in-depth video for each of them. So expect that at some point in the future for a series. But at the top of the heap, you have the battle mech. These take a lot of damage. They can actually have more weapons than their heat than their heat sinks can handle. And they have greater maneuverability than anything else. Sort of. Kind of co equal to the battle mech are aerospace fighters. These are the fighters that operate both in space and in atmosphere and can actually launch into space and cross the atmospheric divide. They, they're they often the equalizers in a more or less equal fight. Or they can turn a one-sided fight into a fair fight. They're they're not as tough as battle mechs, but they're not as fragile as conventional fighters, which are only capable of operating in atmosphere. And conventional fighters have very, very light armor for their, for their size. VTOLs, which cover, well, helicopters and vector thrust aircraft. VTOLs are agile and tend to be good gun platforms. Like, you keep them at range, you stick a long-range gun on them, and you let them plink away. For the clans, of course, you put an ER large laser on one, and you've got the donor. Now, there's another type of airborne vehicle that's kind of newer to Battletech. And it was based on the Russian Ikrano plane, the Caspian Sea Monster. These are wing in ground effect craft. They're they're kind of like above hovercraft, but not quite at the level of aircraft. And they have certain things that they can do, like they can they can cross gaps in terrain. Cost some extra movement points, but they can do it. Then, of course, you have vehicles. Um, the vehicles fall into treaded vehicles, wheeled vehicles, and hovercraft. The ground vehicles. Hovercraft have a problem. If they're going too fast, they can just keep on going when you try to turn. Wheeled vehicles can't go, can't really go into woods, but they gain benefits if they're put on roads. 
and tanks are the greater mobility vehicles because they can go into places the other two can't. And they do have the downside that they're a little bit slower. But they can also go heavier. Now, do you remember? This is not a comprehensive list of all the units. But there's a couple others that deserve special note. Battle armors are basically small infantry squads in, well, powered armor. They've got weapons that can damage a mech, and they can generally keep up with mechs, though a number of them, especially the lighter ones, can jump on the hull of a mech and just ride like that. Then you have my favorite unit, the proto-mech. Proto-mechs are a light development in the pre-Dark Age setting. And they were developed by Clan Smoke Jaguar, and a couple other clans picked them up after the destruction of the Smoke Jaguars. Especially my clan, Blood Spirit. And the big thing with Proto-mechs is... They're tougher than battle armor, though they still function in a point of five, like a battle armor squad. They can carry mech grade weaponry, though mostly the lighter weaponry. And they're cheaper to produce, but that doesn't really come into factor. When you're talking about the clans, for the most part. But you also get to take into account that they are the win or lose part with Protomex is tactics. But I, I personally love using them. I don't get that often a chance to because most people don't like them for some odd reason. And as I said, this is not a comprehensive list of every type of unit. This is just a summary of the major units. So, now that that's out of the way, I'm going to take a look at how the system actually works. And I'm going to do this by going through a typical round in a game. So let's get that set up, shall we? So this is a small, a ridiculously small fighting space. Normally, you'd be fighting on at least four times this. But for purposes of this video, I want to show everything. So we're going to do things on this small space. So the first thing each player does is they roll for initiative. And initiative is a standard. Alright, this side gets 8. This side gets 10. So, the Lao Hu moves first. Sorry, moves second. While the opposing side moves first. Now, this is a Summoner Prime. So, it has jump jets. So, it can move over different types of terrain. Rough terrain here, if you're not using jump jets, costs one point two costs one movement point to go through. The light woods here cost one additional movement point to go through. This is a level one rise. Most of this terrain is level zero or the base level. Level one rise means it costs a battle mech one extra movement point to go up or down that. Now, because this mech has jump jets, it means it has the option to jump. Now, jumping has certain advantages and certain disadvantages. The biggest disadvantage is heat, followed by 
the uh, penalty it gives to hit. So, for this point, I'm going to jump. Now, jumping works different from ground movement. So I'm going to go over what's going on here. When you jump, you measure, you count out in a as close to a straight line as you can. In this case, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And when you jump, you can change your facing any which way you want. So I've made sure the mech is now facing this way. It moved five hexes, which is enough for a plus one penalty to be hit. No, sorry, plus two. And it jumped. So, you've got the a die in front of it to keep track of its movement penalty. Now, the Lao Hu doesn't have jump jets. So, it's going to walk. It's, it's going to walk. So, and the Lao Hu is a 4-6 mech. So, 1, 2... Three and at the end, I'm going to turn one hex side, and that gives me a total of one point to be hit, penalty to be hit. Now, Lao Hu's big weapons are the Gauss rifle and the ER large. The Lao Hu, because it won initiative, fires first. Cause it and it moves second because it gives it the ability to react to its opponent's movement. Now, all fire is simultaneous. The ER large and the Gauss rifle are in close range. Because one, two, three, four, five, it is six hexes out. It is actually in. If this were a standard large laser, it would be just outside of short range. But Gauss rifle and ER large are both short range. So, it has a. One point penalty to hit because it walked. It's shooting at the summoner, which has a three point penalty for it to hit because of the distance it moved and because it jumped. So right now we've got a total of a plus four penalty to my target numbers. Because of my range, I am not suffering a range penalty. So I'm going to go ahead and fire. I'm Because I'm declaring my fire, I declare Gauss Rifle and ER Large into the summer. I'm going to roll the Gauss Rifle first. It misses. Alright, I roll the ER Large. It misses. Okay, so I've missed. Now the summoner is also in short range because it's a summoner prime. It has an ERPPC, an LRM15, and an LB10. Now the LB10, I'm going to fire cluster. It's going to, so it'll be easier to hit. The LB10. And I'm going to fire the LB-10 and the ERPPC. See, I jumped five hexes. So that means I have five heat already. And yes, I could fire everything and not overheat. But I want to save the LRM-15 ammo. <clears throat> so... I jumped. That's a plus three penalty. His movement, I have a plus one penalty 
to hit him. So, equally, these are plus fours. Now, this Lao Hu only has a four gunnery. Well, this is a clan warrior, has a three gunnery. So, I'm going to need sevens to hit here. Sixes with the LB. So, the RPPC hits the LB10. Misses. So, I've hit the Lao Hu. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to roll its location. Where does that 15 points hit? It hits 9, which is going to be the Lao Hu's left leg, because it's coming in through the front arc. Now, when you take damage, you mark on this sheet. This is not a Lao Hu sheet that I'm using, but I'm going to go ahead and mark 15 points of damage. And then we check our heat. Everything sunk in all its heat because of the heat. Well, the maximum heat that the Summoner Prime can generate from its weapons is 22 heat. It has a total of 28 heat dissipation. The Lao Hu... Even with its with the weapons it fired, even with ten double heat sinks, it sinks all that heat. I'm keeping it conservative for this. Because as your mech heats up, different things happen. Penalties to hit, penalties to movement. So, we come to the end of the turn, we take our movement markers off, and then we roll initiative again. So, Wow Who has seven. The Summoner has Snake Eyes. Summoner lost initiative. So, Summoner moves first. The Summoner is going to stay stationary, it is not going to move. This is to make it easier to hit. But also because now the Lao Hu has to decide what he's going to do. His weapons are close in weapon or have a minimum range. His big gun has a minimum range. But at the same time, you always want to keep moving. So the Lao Hu is going to run. One, two, three, four. Actually. The Lao Hu is going to go crazy. And it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. No, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go straight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if this mech were here, there would be a penalty to hit the Lao Hu, and any shots that hit the legs would hit the intervening terrain. In fact, let's just say in this case that the Lao Hu lost the initiative, and that the Summoner won. The Summoner has a couple options. In this case, though, I'm going to do this with the Summoner. One, two, three, four... Five, six. The summoner has ran. Now the Lao Hu has only a has a plus two to its movement, due, uh, plus two to its movement, and the summoner has only a plus one this time. 
Both ran, so both are getting a plus two penalty to hit. Now, the Lao Hu is going... To, sorry, the Summoner is going to fire its weapons. At this case, it's going to do an Alpha Strike. So, it will just fire all of its weapons. It's going to fire the L115, ERPPC, and LB10. LB10 firing slug munitions. So, we have a three, three pilot, a th sorry, three gunnery, plus two because he ran, plus two because his opponent ran. So he's on sevens to hit. LRM 15 hits. ERPPC misses. And the LB10 firing slug hits. So, generally speaking, you always want to roll the bigger damage first. And in this case, alright, so I rolled a 7 here, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to say I rolled another 9 with that LB10. So I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I've gone internal. On, on this stand-in for Lao Hu. So at this point, I stop, and I roll what happens with that leg. Because if I roll a 12, that leg is blown off. I rolled a 6. Now, if I had rolled an 8 or 9, I would have done internal structure damage to that leg. But, I have an LRM-15 that hit. So that means there's 15 missiles that hit in groups of 5. How many missiles hit? 6 is going to be 8 missiles. So, 5 point cluster 2, 8, which would be the left torso because I'm still coming in through the front arc. And then, we're again going to say I hit, with that three-point cluster, we're going to say I hit the nine. Hit that leg for three damage. And this time, we're not going to go with the roll here. We're going to say I rolled a 9. This would mean I did one critical to that leg. Now, the leg has only four locations. Hip, upper leg actuator, lower actuator, and foot on a Lao Hu. So I would roll this, roll that 2, and I would hit the upper leg actuator. What that means is, from now on, the Lao Hu is going to have a penalty to movement and piloting rolls. The Lao Hu did not take enough damage at this point to force a piloting roll. Now, it is going to turn around and it is going to shoot the summoner. It is going to fire its Gauss Rifle and its ER Large. Now, the Gauss Rifle has a minimum range of 2. So what that means is, at 3 hexes away, it has no penalties to hit. At 2 hexes, it has a plus 2 penalty. And at 1 hex, it has a plus 2 penalty. So, it's got a plus 2 penalty for minimum range. Plus 2 because it ran plus one because of the movement. So it needs a it needs a nine to hit the clan mech warrior. And it misses with the Goss. And then it actually does hit because it only needs a seven to hit with the ER large. The ER large 
won't force a piloting roll. So we're not really going to worry about marking the damage, but we're going to see where it would would have hit. So that is a 10. But for this case, we're going to say it hit 8. I'm sorry, it hit 12, which would be the head. Now marking the damage on the head, it would take 8 of the 9 armor on the head. And it would give a pilot hit. Now I have to immediately roll to see if the pilot stays conscious. First first head hit does has a target of three. I make it just barely. So we've done move and fire phase. However, we now have physical attack phase. The summoner Ha is on higher ground. It's kicking on a higher table, the punch hit location chart. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and roll. Now, it still has the plus two because it ran, the plus two because of its opponent's movement. Because we're dealing with a kick, we have a, a minus one benefit. Uh, minus one modifier. So, as a clan warrior, I'm a four pilot. So I need a seven to hit with the kick. We are going to say that this was a seven. Because I want to show this. I have kicked. And now I roll location. There are six locations on the punch hit location chart. It starts on the right arm, going right arm, right torso, center torso, left torso, left arm, with number six being the head. And that is a six. A summoner is a 70 ton mech. The damage for the kick for a 70 ton mech is going to be 14. No mech under 100 tons or no mech 100 tons or under has more than 12 points of armor and internal structure on the head. So what has just happened here is this kick Sheer basically comes in, smashes that head in, killing the pilot. Because when a location is destroyed, it is considered that everything in it has taken a critical hit. And one of those locations in the head is location three, the cockpit. So this was a vicious fight. And it ended with a warrior dead. And that is... Okay, this is not a typical game of Battletech. But this is how the rules typically play out. This is... What I basically did here was... This is a late game portion. Or several turns in. And there's probably other fights going on on the other quarters of the battle of the map, but these two were just sparring it off and fighting. And so, with that, I would like you all to remember that this is the basics of BattleTech. This is not the full game. And next week. Since I'm on a little bit of a mech kick, next week I'm going to talk about Artalsorian's Mechton. So until then, I'd like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming!